So now let me discuss the drugs which are used in the treatment of the chronic gout. Right? Let me discuss the drugs which are used in the treatment of chronic gout. Now what are the strategies we have discussed for chronic gout? Like we have a group of drugs which will decrease the uric acid synthesis and we have a group of drug which will increase the excretion of the uric acid and we have a group of drugs which will increase the metabolism of this particular uric acid. Now first let me discuss the group of drugs which will decrease the uric acid synthesis. Right, the drugs which will decrease the uric acid synthesis. Now to, we have two important drugs which will decrease the uric acid synthesis that is allopurinol and the other drug is febuxostat right that the drug is the febuxostat so these are the two important drugs which will decrease the uric acid synthesis now you see here first let me discuss about the allopurinol so if you take this particular allopurinol, this is a, a purine analog and which particular purine analog is? This is a hypoxanthine analog, right? This is a hypoxanthine analog, all right, next. Now, and this is the drug which will decrease the synthesis of the uric acid and the recently approved drug which will decrease the uric acid synthesis is a febuxostat and your febuxostat this is a non-purine analog right remember your febuxostat this is a non-purine analog so both of these drugs they will decrease the production of the uric acid and what is the mechanism of action how do they inhibit or how do they reduce the uric acid production remember they will reduce the uric acid production by inhibiting the enzyme right by inhibiting an enzyme which is called as xanthine oxidase remember xanthine oxidase is an important enzyme which is required for the synthesis of the uric acid Right, xanthine oxidase is an important enzyme which is required for the synthesis of the uric acid. So both of these drugs what they will do is they will inhibit the enzyme xanthine oxidase and thereby the uric acid synthesis will not occur. Now what exactly the allopurinol does? Remember this particular allopurinol, right this particular allopurinol it is metabolized by the same enzyme that is xanthine oxidase to alloxanthin. Right, it is metabolized by the same enzyme that is alloxanthin. So, so here what we have is a xanthine oxidase. So, in the presence of xanthine oxidase, the allopurinol is converted into the alloxanthin. Now, what this alloxanthin will do is alloxanthin, remember, we it is a long acting inhibitor, right? It is a long acting inhibitor of xanthine oxidase. So, the alloxanthine which is formed from the allopurinol will itself will inhibit this particular xanthine oxidase and thereby we don't have the enzyme which is required for the synthesis of the uric acid. So, thereby the uric acid synthesis will not occur. Now, where are these drugs indicated? Remember, these are indicated as the drug of choice for the chronic gout in the intercritical period right these are considered as drug of choice in the chronic gout in the inter critical period right in the intercritical period that is between the two attacks right in between the two acute attacks these drugs they are considered as the drug of choice right and remember this particular drugs which will reduce the uric acid synthesis they can also be used with the anti-cancer drugs right used with the anti-cancer drugs 
Now, why do we use this with anti-cancer drugs? Because whenever we are using this anti-cancer drugs, there will be hyperuricemia. So, in order to decrease that secondary hyperuricemia, we give this particular, the drugs which will synthesize the uric acid. So, remember, these drugs, they are given as drug of choice in chronic gout in the intercritical period and also with the anti-cancer drug to decrease the secondary hyperuricemia all right now you take this particular xanthine oxidase right so if you take the purine catabolism right that is the breakdown of the purines so the purine catabolism it is once the purines they are broken down they are converted into hypoxanthine right they are converted into hypoxanthine this particular hypoxanthine is then converted into xanthine then xanthine in the presence of enzyme xanthine oxidase is converted into uric acid now remember this particular xanthine oxidase is required for the two steps for the conversion of hypoxanthine to xanthine and for the conversion of xanthine to uric acid we require this particular xanthine oxidase right now this particular uric acid this will undergo a urinary excretion or this uric acid metabolism also can be increased by the enzyme urinary or urate oxidase so remember this uric acid in the presence of urate oxidase is converted into allantoin so even this particular allantoin also will undergo a urinary excretion so remember this is the normal purine metabolism right this is the normal purine metabolism now where are we giving this particular allopurinol or allopurinol or your the febuxostat we are inhibiting that xanthine oxidase so when you inhibit that xanthine oxidase either your hypoxanthine is not converted to xanthine or xanthine is not converted into uric acid so by giving this particular enzyme inhibitors the uric acid synthesis will be reduced remember this point so these are the steps in the the purine catabolism now now let me discuss some of the drug interactions with the drugs which are used to reduce the uric acid synthesis now we have two important drugs right we have two important drugs that is six mercaptopurin right six mercaptopurin and as well as the azathioprine right and azathioprine Remember both of these drugs that is 6 mercaptopurin and as well as azathioprine they are metabolized by the xanthine oxidase. Alright they are metabolized by xanthine oxidase. Now when you are giving the xanthine oxidase inhibitors right when you are giving the xanthine oxidase inhibitors what will happen once this enzyme is inhibited the metabolism of this 6 mercaptopurin and azathioprine does not occur therefore dose of these drugs should be decreased when given with allopurinol right therefore dose of these drugs should be decreased when given with allopurinol so this is a very important point right next you take this particular allopurinol right you take this particular allopurinol Allopurinol, it is also used as an adjuvant to sodium stibogluconate, right? So, allopurinol along with sodium stibogluconate, right? Along with sodium stibogluconate, it is used in the treatment of Kala Azar. right it is used in the treatment of kala azar all right okay so this is the another advantage of your allopurinol right next now remember this particular allopurinol it is contraindicated in the treatment of acute gout right this allopurinol this is contraindicated in the treatment of acute gout i'll tell you why now remember why this is contraindicated in the treatment of acute gout is 
because uric acid it has inhibitory effect on the release of the cytokines right in case of acute gout the uric acid whichever is increased it has inhibitory effect on the release of the cytokines so in such clinical scenario where uric acid is inhibiting the cytokines if you give allopurinol what the allopurinol will do allopurinol will reduce the uric acid synthesis when allopurinol reduces the uric acid synthesis then the inhibitory effect on the release of the cytokines will not be there so remember this point it is contraindicated in acute gout because which one the allopurinol is contraindicated in acute gout because uric acid has inhibitory effect on the release of the cytokines and allopurinol may aggravate the inflammation by reducing the uric acid synthesis all right so that is a very important point about the allopurinol which is contraindicated in the treatment of acute gout now the most frequent adverse effect with the xanthine oxidase inhibitors is the precipitation of the acute attack of gout right the most common adverse effect is the precipitation of acute attack of gout right the precipitation of acute attack of gout so this is the most common adverse effect which is associated with this particular allopurinol now those individuals who are taking this allopurinol some group of individuals they are associated with the hypersensitivity now who are those group of individuals who are associated with the allopurinol hypersensitivity is remember those group of individuals who are having right those group of individuals who are having hla b 5801 right those individuals who are having hla b 5801 these are the group of individuals they are associated with the hypersensitivity with the allopurinol right hypersensitivity with the allopurinol now this allopurinol when you combine with ampicillin right when you combine this with ampicillin what is the problem is nearly around 20% of patients right nearly around 20% of patients they develop rash right this is another important adverse effects with the allopurinol so allopurinol whenever it is given along with ampicillin this drug will cause rash in 20% of patients all right next another important point what you need to remember is this particular dosage of this allopurinol should be reduced in patients with renal failure okay the dosage of the allopurinol should be reduced or it should be adjusted in patients with the allopurinol whereas you take febuxostat this can be administered without dose adjustment so this particular febuxostat no dose adjustment in renal failure right no dose adjustment in patients with the renal failure all right so but whenever you are giving this particular febuxostat what you have to monitor is you have to monitor the liver function tests right what you have to monitor is you have to monitor the liver function test whenever you are giving this febuxostat so these are some of the points about your drugs which will decrease the uric acid synthesis right so let me shortly revise so the drugs which will decrease the uric acid synthesis are the allopurinol and as well as febuxostat and you take the allopurinol it is an hypoxanthine analog whereas your febuxostat it is a non purine analog the mechanism of action of these particular drugs is they act by inhibiting the enzyme xanthine oxidase and this xanthine oxidase it is required for the conversion of hypoxanthine to xanthine and for the conversion of xanthine to the uric acid so whenever you give this particular drug xanthine oxidase is inhibited and thereby conversion of xanthine to uric acid will not occur and uric acid synthesis will reduce and if you take the mechanism of action of the allopurinol 
Allopurinol, whenever you, you give, this in the presence of xanthine oxidase is converted into alloxanthine. This alloxanthine is a long acting inhibitor of the xanthine oxidase enzyme. And this particular allopurinol, it is considered as the drug of choice for chronic gout in the intercritical period that is between the two attacks and it is also used along with the anti-cancer drugs. And the drug interactions with the allopurinol is the 6 mercaptopurin and as well as azathioprine, they are metabolized with the same enzyme that is xanthine oxidase. So, whenever you are giving this 6 mercaptopurin and as well as azathioprine along with allopurinol, those adjustment has to be done. And allopurinol along with sodium stibogluconate, it is used in the treatment of Kala Azar. And remember this particular the allopurinol, it is contraindicated in the treatment of acute attack of the gout and the most common adverse effect with the allopurinol is aggravation of acute attack of the gout. And the very important point is this allopurinol whenever you give along with ampicillin, it will cause rash in 20% of patients and you take this allopurinol, allopurinol will the dose of the allopurinol should be reduced or it should be adjusted in patients with the renal failure whereas febuxostat you do not require the dose adjustment in patients with the renal failure but whenever you are giving febuxostat liver function tests have to be monitored because the febuxostat can result in abnormal liver function tests.